Town Session along with James C. James presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, before we get started, the Wealth Attorney's Office had supplied me a list of uh, persons who are in attendance today on behalf of victims or uh, immediate family members. So I just want to kind of run down that list real quick. And uh, if I call your name, if you just raise your hand so I can see where you're at. <clears throat> Corey Dysinger, okay, thank you. Jeff Dysinger, Amy Nelson, Greg Nelson, Teresa Cope, Brian Cope, Mary Michelle Thompson, and Jason Holt, Scott as Cosman. I'm sorry, Cowher. Cowan. Cosner. Cosner? I'm sorry, Scott Cosner. Can't read. Sorry, Mr. Cosner. Okay. Brian Evans. Mr. Evans. Larissa Smock. Beth, uh, is it Cosner as well, or Cosner? Cosner. And Justin Keeling. Okay. Is there anybody uh, that I did not call your name that's not a member of the uh, law enforcement or the court personnel? Okay. All right. And we have uh, satisfied that those are all appropriate relationships under the law. Um, even though we have changed courtrooms and there is a different judge, the procedure at this point is relatively uh, the same as it was in district court unless and until a successful arraignment occurs. So pursuant to KRS 610060, I'm going to give the following colloquy, not only to the child defendant, but as well to uh, his parents, where his parents located. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and sir, do you understand that you have the right to counsel? If you are unable to attain counsel, counsel be appointed for you. Okay, and I think that's been accomplished. Uh, your attorney entered his uh, appearance, I believe, today in the record officially, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And so you understand you have the right to remain silent and then anything you say may, may and can uh, be used against you. Okay. Do you understand that you have a right to confront anyone who has accused you and to cross-examine that person on the allegations made against you? If I could get you to speak out loud, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you understand that you have the right to appeal from a determination of this court? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you understand that these rights belong to you and may not be waived by your parents, guardian, or person exercising custodial control over you? Yes, sir. Okay. And then as to the parents, do you understand that you have a right to counsel and that counsel may be appointed to you um, that's separate counsel from that that represents your child if you qualify for that? Okay. And do you understand if you have a right to remain silent and that anything you say may be used against your child? Okay. You understand that there exists a right to appeal from any determination of this court? Okay. All right. With that out of the way, we are here for arraignment. Are we ready to proceed with the arraignment process, gentlemen? Commonwealth is ready to proceed, Your Honor. Okay. Defense? Judge, we would object to proceeding with the arraignment at this time um, under uh, RCR uh, 8.18. We would object to the jurisdiction of this court, and uh, with all respect, Your Honor, we believe that this case was rushed through the juvenile proceeding. We believe that the district court, the juvenile court, uh, exists as a gatekeeper and that it was not able to perform its gatekeeper function. Uh, I understand that in a case like this, um, everyone, uh, everyone is trying to move it as fast as possible, but at times I think that 
because of the seriousness of the case, it needs that much additional scrutiny, and that scrutiny begins with a juvenile and juvenile court. So we would object to proceeding at this time with an arraignment. We would ask the court to uh, set a hearing before your honor to challenge the um, certification and transfer process. Very well. Response to that specific issue from the Commonwealth. Yes, Judge. As to that specific issue, I would point out to the court 818 is, is motions that must be made before trial, and if not, they are waived. This is arraignment. Uh, I don't know how long this will take before we get to trial, if we do go to trial, but uh, that jurisdictional argument is not waived, if not raised today. We can raise that uh, at any point before trial. In fact, subject matter jurisdiction, as you know, can be made on appeal for the first time. So uh, I guess in response to that is to say we can address that motion uh, at a separate hearing uh, and go ahead and arraign him today. Uh, to me, uh, the court is well aware of the circus that this is all created. I think to postpone this for any reason at all uh, would just further uh, complicate matters and uh, judicial resources. Uh, and uh, we, we adamantly oppose that. We're, we are in circuit court. He was found as a youthful offender. Uh, and so that's, that's this, this is the appropriate court, Your Honor. Okay. Well, without any evidence before me today, I have no reason to question that the appropriate process was followed. Uh, given the allegations of the case, um, it would seem that um, not appropriately following the process as set out under Kentucky law to transfer a juvenile to circuit court, <clears throat> that would be a hard claim to make. Uh, in this situation, but it could be made. But I have no evidence in front of me at this moment or any uh, uh, reason to believe that that process was not followed. So at, at this time, uh, that motion will be denied. Uh, other motions, sir? Judge, if we could approach along with the Commonwealth for one moment. Yes, you may. 